Okay, I'm working on some uh, leather-covered flasks with initials on them. They're going to be groomsmen's gifts for a wedding that's coming up. Uh, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about. What I want to talk about on this is there's a tendency for people to use a stitch um, that they put this together. They'll just use a whip stitch or something like that. And that really kind of annoys me that people use a whip stitch for everything. Um, it's not the best stitch in this case. Uh, you really should be using, for putting two pieces together, they're going to line up um, flush butted against each other so they don't shift side to side or anything like that. Uh, a baseball stitch is a much better stitch than a whip stitch. So I wanted to do just a little bit about how to do a baseball stitch. And on each of these, they're a pretty small project. It's only about three and a half inches of stitching, so it goes pretty quick. Um, this is something that is hand stitching. So as opposed to most of my projects, I can't do this on a machine. So as usual, you'll thread your needle, pull some through, and go back and pierce the thread. And then slide that down over so you've got it locked onto the needle. And we're going to put, just like for our, a saddle stitch, a needle on each side. There we go. Just kind of twist that together. Now we don't have a big lump there to deal with. And I've got about a little bit less than a yard of thread here. So on this, we're just going to start. I've got holes punched on each side. Just used a pricking iron to do that. I just punch them through with that on, this is about six ounce leather. Um, how much thread you're going to need depends on the distance apart between these holes. Basically how much you leave as a seam allowance and the thickness of your leather and a lot of other factors but in this case about a yard should work but anyway i'm going to want these to go through from the outside and to start it off i want them almost even and i'm going to take one of them back out And around and back down through the hole that it came through originally and just kind of double up that first stitch just to lock everything in place a little bit all right from there we're gonna pull our threads through and I need to sort out which one's which all right we're gonna pull the one that's coming out of this side back out of our way and then this other one's going to come up between the two pieces of leather, come out the middle, and it's going to go down the hole on that side, the side opposite of the one it, it came out of. And then we're going to pull that thread back out of our way. Take our other thread, the one that originally started on this lower side, and it's coming out from between the two pieces of leather. It's going to go down that hole, on, again, the opposite side from where it started. It's going to come up between the two pieces, and then it's going to go down this hole back on this side, and we're going to pull it back out of the way. And you're just going to repeat that, going through this hole on our top part there, pull it up in the middle. Then go through the hole down here. Pull it back. And all the way down the line. And I can pull them pretty tight when I do this. And it just pulls the two pieces of leather together. If you did this with a whip stitch and you pull them really tight, it's going to pucker them up and make them roll. And then you got a problem to deal with. And of course, if you're doing it with a running stitch or a saddle stitch, even bigger problem. Um, getting it to line up the way you want it to in the end.
Now this is probably not the only way to explain doing a saddle stitch, but this is the way that I do it and what works for me. Different things work for different people, as is always the case with leather working. I found this is a way that I get nice even looking stitches without spending a huge amount of time at it. All right, then I'm down to my last holes. And what I'm gonna do there is again, stitch kind of around it, back down inside, just to double up that stitch. And then you could tie a knot or something like that. I find knots just come loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm not sure if I can show this on camera or not, or how I'm going to show it on camera. Uh, but I'm just going to tuck the ends down under, oh, if I can get them four stitches or so. And use a pair of pliers to reach up in there and pull that down. And I'll do the same thing with the other one. Tuck it through under the stitching there. And it'll get held together with friction just like stitching usually is. If you get three or four of those, you're usually good. And then you just trim off, leave some extra in there. And that is a real quick baseball stitch. I'm just kind of smoothing it out a little bit with uh, slicker. You can do that when it's on the flask too. But yeah, I'd have to go back and see the footage to see how long that took, but just really a few minutes. I can do it pretty much almost as fast as I could do a whip stitch, and like I said, it's a much better stitch for the job because these pieces stay right where they need to be. They don't shift side to side any. Uh, it doesn't want to bend back and forth. Those ends just stay right flat against each other like they're supposed to.